You know what they say, these streets aren't what they used to be, at least to my knowledge. I don't know why I'm sent here, but I'm sure there's a reason why. Investigation maybe? Interrogation? Eyewitness? I've seen it all. I've been through multiple crime scenes at my prime, but uh, I think this one might be a little something special. That's how the world goes round. But enough dilly dallying. Let's get right to it. So it appears my client has sent me to play or do this game. I never played games like this before, but I guess I'll give it a go, I suppose. Enter the name. Well, I guess you can call me Private Investigator Mertens. Or just simply Mertens for now. Just for simplicity's sake, that is. My mind, an endless cascade of darkness, and yet somehow I thought I'd find solace in my dreams. Okay. I felt fortunate, really. Not many women had the privilege to work, and even less so in the law enforcement field. Assistant Investigator, that's a title I'd like to be addressed as. Although not many, if any, called me that. But I wouldn't let that bring me down. To me, it was enough to be Miss Monica's right-hand gal. Oh, so uh, apparently I'm going to play as a woman in this one. Interesting. Sure, I was mainly there to type down the reports on her jobs. And oh boy, I sure like typing them up. But hopefully, I might eventually follow her steps into the action and learn the ropes. Almost done. And... Done! Oh! Well, I guess this is the, uh, the, the Miss Sayori that my client has been talking about. I've heard a lot of good things about her. I mean, she's cute, adorable, and uh, with a haircut like that, she's definitely... A muffin, indeed. Another report perfectly crafted to describe a multiple homicide. What would be us without those twisted criminals, am I right, miss? I tried to lighten the mood up a little bit and have a chat with Miss Monica. Not that it was tense. Hey, heck, we even had the turntable playing some tunes from time to time. But it didn't turn to try to be on her good side. Indeed, Sayori. So, this is Miss Sayori. Or, well, Miss Monica. My mistake. I have a trouble remembering names sometimes, but... Well then, I guess my client has been acquainted by these two, it seems. Maybe I might be acquainted with them for, well, for personal matters if I want to, or whatever. But man, this is going to be really interesting indeed. Even though I wish crime scenes were a little cleaner for a change. Bloodstains are always a to get rid of. Well mouth as always, but I tried to correct her manners? Maybe I was too naive thinking of manners when I haven't seen the harsh reality of this profession. But could you blame me? My only experience with crime scenes and cases were from descriptions she gave me. I never... I had never seen a real corpse. Perhaps I needed to see some of that stuff, but I had to fill off gruesome texts. Ah, I wonder what a crime scene looks like, with cops running around and all. Is it like in Borges books? Drama, mystery, action? Oh Sayori, you read too much fiction. You should really stop trying to escape reality with fairy tales. Well, reality isn't very kind to us, wouldn't you say, miss? I mean, that's the harsh truth of this world there, um, Blossom. <laughs> um, look, the job isn't, the job really isn't that all that fantastic and thrilling. Most of the time we're investigating some old man who smuggled a bit too much spirit or some blind pig in the heart of the city. 
I know, I know. But I bet it's better than staying at the office typing reports. Ah, well, perhaps. She was right, though. I did have a knack for reading fiction, although I wouldn't call them fairy tales. I really like the idea that there were good and bad guys, and that the good guys can solve impossible mysteries using their wits and obscure clues, shutting down any hope for the dastardly villain. Oh, how many times I ha have I written to Merns about this since I got the job? We always, we would always sneak out to the library, rummaging through the shelves of fiction in the corner of the expansive halls. When I got hired by Miss Monica, we would chuckle about how I seemed to be living out of those cop capers we could read. He'd always say that I outgrow him one day, become a big shot private investigator and leave him in the dust. He had a very peculiar idea about himself. Said he wasn't gonna amount to much and he liked it that way. Eventually, I convinced him that I would never outgrow him and we promised to always write to each other and stay in contact. Which reminds me... Um, Miss Monica? You know, seeing these two together uh, really puts a smile on my face. I don't know why, but um, I really like the, um, the style that they're given, especially with the client's favorite right here. She really does look like a cutie. Yes? Did I get any correspondence by any chance? I've been waiting to get some responses to my letters. Uh-uh. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have time to check the... Oh, would you look at that? It seems a new case beckons. Picking up the blower, she rested her laurels on her crowded desk as if it was some social call. Always so relaxed in the face of these horrible crimes, like a man being thrown in a river is just another Tuesday for her. So confident and assertive that she gained the respect of all the bulls she met. A looker like her, she makes the men around her swoon, yet not there to make a move. Alright, rookie, I think you can come with me this time. It's a simple case. Huh? That caught me by surprise. Here I was wondering when I get to see some action, but all of a sudden? I did my best to keep my, my excitement at bay. Heck yeah! I mean, yes, sir, lady, woman. Ma'am! I mean ma'am! I failed. I'm glad you showed me your excitement, lass. But hurry up, we have no time to waste. The longer we take, the less we make. Aren't we paid by the hour? We're paid by every solved, so we better solve this quickly. Mouse to feed and all that. R right Lightning fast, she grabbed her Barcelino and made her way out, barely giving me time to keep up. Well then, it seems that we're gonna solve our first case then. And this music, what a nice touch there, uh... Developers? I again, I don't do s these kinds of things, you know? You expect it to be rather calm and, and relaxing. But when you look at the lonely, faint lights illuminating the darkest alleys, your mind begins to race. I always talk to the avenues and busy streets, but I can't deny I've also had a fascination with wanting to know what lurks behind the facade. What mysteries could it be hiding? What darkness lurks in the loneliest corners? And now I found my opportunity to see just that. So, what's the case, boss? Uh, well, nothing particularly interesting. Something up the slumps near the industrial district. Apparently, a body washed ashore on the riverbank. So the police wouldn't bother to, wouldn't want to bother with the poor sods finale. Do we have any clues on what happened? Clues? No. Just going to take a look and write down notes on what we see. Basic survey, nothing more. You, th you think this might be a murder? <laughs> Please. Her, ch her chuckle echoed through the barren streets. What? A body washing up by the shore? Seems like a murder to me. And that's why you're the rookie here, little lass. We're the same age. I couldn't exactly agree with her train of thought. Same age. I heard that they're both of them are 18, so... I, I think I completely understand that, but that doesn't matter. 
But then again, maybe it was my eagerness to find something thrilling in the case. And well, we haven't even arrived at the scene. Swaying through the industrial block's buildings, we found our way to the river. The bridge was wearing a spectacle of lights, illuminated by what seemed to be deteriorating streetlights. The full moon reflected on the body of water, its light shimmering across the ripples. Speaking of bodies... There! I see the floater bobbing just ahead! Thank glob we didn't have to get... have to get wet trying to find this sack of meat. Go ahead, take your fill. Report back to me with what you see. Seriously? May I? Yeah, knock yourself out. And she told me so, she pulled out a gasper, moving it up onto her lips and lighting it. As she saw me standing around, waiting to be dismissed, she waved at me to go, almost swatting a f away a fly. Without wasting any time, I jumped over the railing onto the river's bank. I approached the swollen body. Oh my. Well, it does seem to be a, um, a crime scene here, or at least, well, a body to see, or a body rather. Oh man, uh, again, sorry for the starting for, well, my mix of words here, I'm just, uh, well, how do I say this particularly clearly? I'd say this one's a special one, considering that, uh, my client here says that this body appears to be Natsuki, I think. Huh, what are these names? I've heard a lot of names in, in this town, but never like this. A small girl, very petite. If, it, if I were so anyone else, I would have mistaken her for a child. She was dressed in tattered rags, her body frail and stringy. I wasn't used to the look of people in the slums, but her appearance definitely gave away that the fact she's are from around the area. It had all no order to it. She must have been relatively new then. Before I could roll on her back, I noticed the arms were twisted around, bones shattered. Oh my. So, it seems someone may have abused her, in a way. The neck was limp and the face battered. It wasn't really all that bloated, so maybe it hadn't been flo blo floating for long. I'm sure this was a violent attack, miss. Maybe the attacker went too far and killed her, wanted to get rid of the evidence and panicked. Just threw it in a river thinking no one would find it. Hmm, yeah, that's not very convincing. She told me as she lit another cig. After a long huff and a puff of smoke, she came back at me. Smoke? She asked me while holding up a packet of cigarettes to my face as I was nailing down by the body. Not one for those coffin nails. Honestly, I don't smoke. It would be a lot more better if it were a lollipop, so uh, I'll pass for now, Miss Monica. Suit yourself. Look, Sayori, what I see here is a suicide victim. See the bridge? It's not uncommon to see folks jumping off of it. Well, Miss Monica, how would you explain the shattered bones and of course the bruises all over her body. And plus, why would anyone shatter their own bones? And plus, she's also heavily abused. Well, but what about the bruises and broken bones it has all over? Well, at least with Miss Sayori, at least she knows, so... Simple, it's been floating for a while now. Honestly, I'd be surprised if it didn't have any damage. The lack of odor shows that she's been recently offed. It's been in the water, bloating. O odor doesn't, does not build up, but in the insides. Furthermore, bruises prove nothing anyway. Really? Really? Look a little closer. You'll see a faint yellowish discoloration. That, Dolly, indicates that bruising happened long before. Oh, I see. It made sense, but there was a little detail in the logic that kept poking in my mind. Old bruises? That many? But wouldn't that indicate that it wasn't the first time that she got attacked? Ugh, listen, that actually means you've got your suicide motive. She got hit by some bird, whether it be a family member or some other things. Hated her life, chomped off a bridge. 
Congratulations, case closed. Really, Miss Monica? Just gonna end it off like that? But then means their case closed. Let's go back to the office and write the report. Are you sure? Not many cases are this simple, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth, alright, Lassie? Just settle in and get whatever dough we can get. Alright. Come on, chop chop. Wow. Some kind of a detective you are, Miss Monica. She took the lead and I followed. As I expected, as, as expected with my assistant position, but still, I wasn't pleased with how everything went down. My every suggestion was shut down because she knew better. Wouldn't call it anger, but a, disappoint, but a heavy disappointment is what I felt. Even with how we handled the body. Say, miss, what's going to happen with the body now? Huh? Oh. Well, technically, that's the police's work. This was a very low priority case, as he saw. They just don't... They just don't bother a, a lot with the poor. That's just wrong. Justice is for everyone. Exactly, Miss Sayori. Alright, lassie. Don't go around puking out what you read from some novel. In the end, it's the money that makes the girl the world go round. A detective from the Pritisink never would never come here for this kind of case. It's simply not worth their time. So they're just gonna let it rot at the river's bank? I can't deny that's a possibility. But I don't like to think uh, I drink that same water. <laughs> Her laugh made me realize how she's able to shrug off any guilt she may have. Perhaps someday, I'll be able to be as mentally strong. On the bright side, I did see my first corpse and barely reacted to that fact. It seems all that literary research wasn't a waste after all. Alright, Sayori, I know you may be still be excited, but I think I'm going to leave the report to you. It's been a long night, so maybe you w you would want to leave it for tomorrow. Are you com Are you not coming in, miss? Nah, I'm done for tonight. We'll meet tomorrow evening. Sure thing. With a slight wave, she walked away to her apartment, leaving me at the office's door. She would let me stay at the office so I could use it to sleep at night and avoid renting. I was very grateful for that. Money wasn't easy to come by during these trying times. Even though it was about to collapse, I still had to write a letter for Mertens. He would want to hear all about the events of today. In the morning, I would go to the po post office and drop off the letter. So I began my report. I couldn't help but let out a small giggle. Alright. Wait, what does it say? Click. I'm pretty sure that says and click out on the area to skip the poem or letter portion. Dearest, today's correspondence is dated Friday, the first day by the first of April. The last message received was dated Wednesday, the twentieth of January. I firmly inform you that I have seen my first corpse. Fortunately, I beat you to it. I it would have been a shame if one of our kin had passed while I was away from home. Honestly, I thought it was going to be like I, we have always imagined. An intricate case with millions of clues to follow, bad guys to track down. But reality struck, struck me a little hard today, and apparently we don't get to investigate much in this investigation job. The victim, is in, the victim in this case was a small frame female whose corpse was found floating in the river. Now, for my version of the story, I think she was murdered. She had her arms bone shattered and the neck was twisted around. The face was all covered in old bruises and that just would, couldn't be an accident. Despite what I saw and thought, Miss Monica came to the conclusion that it was a suicide without further investigation. Can you believe that? But like I said, in reality, it all came down to time invested and money issues. We had other cases and to her, this was open and shut case. No fun allowed. I hope things are progressing more smoothly with you and I can't wait to hear from you again. Miss you so much. With love, Sayori. I always thought it was cute how we treat them like official reports. We even figure out a format. 
It kept the constant letters entertaining. I neatly folded the letter into four squares, placing it into an envelope and sent it the next morning. Alright, that's actually kind of sweet of her. My synchronized fingers are on fire writing down the report as fast as I could before Monica's arrival at the office. I never learned to do my backlog before it was too late. My darn laziness continued to chase me. Why, hello there, my coral ass. I'm working hard, or... oh. Yes. Ah, well, you didn't do it before I got here, you know. I'm an efficient worker, miss. Huh. <laughs> I can see. She, she entered the office and placed her hat on the coat hanger. I began shaking my hands a bit, for my wrists and fingers were screaming at me. I watched as she got to the turntable, elegantly picking out a record and slowly placing it on the platter of the record player. Right. Her hands had gently placed her for the needle and begun playing a smooth tune to accompany us for what seemed to be another uneventful evening. He turned her seat and took another one of her daily smokes. Want a snipe, Sayori? <laughs> I'd rather not. Well, I didn't know you can smoke inside, but eh. Guess those were the times, I suppose. But then again, I don't encourage smoking. I would rather have a lollipop, thank you very much. Suit yourself. Any word on the correspondence, Miss, Miss Monica? As if being asked to move a heavy boulder up a hill, Monica sighed loudly and deeply, making sure to remove the cigarette beforehand. I just got here, Sayori. I didn't have the time to check. Well, if you are tired, miss, I could check for you? Don't you dare. Her sudden response sent a shiver down my spine, elevating my heartbeat. Needless to say, I was caught off guard. Even though she hadn't been the gentlest soul, I've never seen Monica be so aggressive before. It seems that you've forgotten that my personal mail is delivered here as well. I told you before that I didn't get any for you and that surely remains to be the case. Do not bring up going through my stuff again. S sorry miss, I thought... Clearly not enough. So much for being an investigator. Her words struck me deeply. Well, Miss Monica, I think I would recommend that you should uh, give Miss Sayori her uh, her cut. Or her chance, rather. Well, I don't know about you people, but I think Miss Monica right here seems to be oddly suspicious to me. I felt like a kid who didn't know how to behave and I was spoken to, to like one as well. My gaze found itself guided to the floor. I'm... I'm sorry, Sayori. It's just a stress, I shouldn't have reacted that way. I brought up my I brought my head up again. It's alright, miss. I understand. At a girl. Right on cue. Hopefully we have a new case in our hands. It'll be a good opportunity to drain you up, don't you think? With a smile and a quick wink, I she turned and she turned to attend to the call. What just happened had me confused. A sudden whiplash of emotions, as if Monica had an entire other person residing within her. But if she was going to take me to another case, maybe it wasn't all that bad. And maybe this time I could prove myself. As she walked, as she finished her talk, she took a moment and looked at me. Well, it seems like we have a hot one on our hands. Really, miss? Yes, come on now, grab your coat and I'll brief you while we talk. I don't have a coat. Oh. Well, shake a leg. Without saying any further, she grabbed her hat and took off, and I wasn't far behind. <laughs> this time, we walked for a while. Well then, walking across the streets and all that jazz. That's nice. That's nice. This looks really nice as well. This time, we walked for a while. The scenery was nothing like yesterday's. We passed through the residential area, which now showcased more and more empty abandoned houses. We were heading towards the richest parts. I've been there only a couple of times. First you see the house get bigger and taller, further away from one another as you progress. Until eventually, you can't even see the houses as they hide in the 
middle of acres upon acres of private lands. You find yourself following a seemingly endless fence, marking the edges that divide riches from rags. Fortunately, the middle class was evaporating into poverty, thus highlighting the difference even further. So, here's the details provided by the initial police survey. A high-class woman was found dead inside her mansion's library. Apparently, the husband is a very successful businessman, major shareholder of a metallurgic company. He's been out of the apple for a while now, supposedly making subsidy deals with politicians. So, someone knew that the big fish was away and tried to get a piece of the riches? Beats me, I still need to see the scene, you know. Ah, right, of course. You really need to stop assuming things, Siori. I can't help it, this is the big one. Right. Again, as I had my noggin racing, thinking on how this could have gone down. There's no way this time it was going to be a boring case without mystery. Hopefully yes, and uh, hopefully Monica would definitely give the rookie her chance. Rhea arrived at the place, greeted by an iron gate with sturdy brick pillars at each side. A couple of officers were riding there this time around. Already, the differences with yesterday's case were showing. Pleasant night, fellers. Evening, dollface. Took your sweet time. Ah, give me a break. I'm here to do my job. Hey, woo, relax. Say, how about we hit... Hit the speak say after speak speak a say after this mess. I don't know how to say that. Sorry. Maybe if it wasn't illegal, you chump, you're a cop. And uh, forget it. So, who's the muffin? The man swiped me from top to bottom with his gaze. It amazed me how Monica could keep her cool with all this. Goons as cops with little morals, they may as well be mercenaries. Greetings, I'm the investigator's assistant. He's going to come along and take a look with me. He's coming after two? Keep dreaming. Anyways, have you heard anything else besides the initial report? Um, perhaps. Maybe a honey cooler will light up my... Pally, you better keep your mouth shut if all you do is keep yapping garbage like that. The Jeebus, alright lady, dang. I've heard that the butter and egg man went dizzy with the dame. Handmade mentioned him and his woman having huge arguments over the phone. Good boy, finally something worthwhile out of your mouth. I don't know about you, but I think this offer is also kind of suspicious as well. And plus, calling the uh, calling the Miss Sayori a muffin? Oh boy, I think I understand why my uh, my client wanted me to uh, to do this for him now. So I think I know the reason why. It's either I might be a bodyguard or well. In other words, as long as I'm hired to do anything, well, I'll be there for him. And them too. With a smirk on his face, the man tipped his cap and let us through. We walked across the paved road past the fountain that led us to the enormous wooden doors. This time, we had something to work with, it seemed. Already, we heard some clues. This, is, this was exciting. As we approached the pompous entrance, the doors creaked open and the butler let us in. He led straight us to the library for us to take a look at the scene. So, it appears that the victim in this next case is uh, Mrs. Yuri, it seems. I mean, of course, considering that she is married in this one with a husband and... My, oh my, what a tragedy this is. Murder! Sayori, please. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyways, I've seen enough. Huh? How? Don't worry, I'll let you have your fill. Go on, have a look. Right. I approached the body. A shocker to me, she was around our age. I had concluded that she was either in, in it for the dough or her tastes were a bit more developed than most. Than most. But never mind all that, she wore a dress and a fancy arrangement of plumes as headwear. The cause of death was very clear. A vile, deep wound in the entire center of her chest all the way down to her heart. Her mouth was slightly parted, strands of blood escaped from it. The body was as fresh as if it were just found. Even the blood was wet enough to smear what 
What a touch. Eyes were eyes left wide open. I couldn't seem to find hints of struggle, unfortunately. Walking around the room, I decided to describe to Monica what I've been observing. She already had a lit cigarette and was enjoying herself. Care for a fag? Well, um, before if anyone out there is going to complain to me about that word, I'm pretty sure that's uh, 1940s lingo, so uh, if, you don't know, if you don't know that one, then you're definitely missing out. It might ease your mind a bit. I'll have to say no. So obviously, she died of blood loss. Oh, Sherlock, tell me more. What, Miss Monica's saying Miss Sayori no Sherlock? I'll take that as a compliment. I can't seem to find where the weapon though, which is concerning. I'm going to make it easier for you. She killed herself out of anguish over her husband cheating on her. I don't know, I don't think we can- not Oh, Christ, no. I felt a- I felt a cracking noise coming from under my feet, beneath- on- beneath the rug. This was a lead. I uncovered the floor and found a bunch of crystal shards scattered, looking like they hid them in a rush. There is a strain of struggle, but without paying attention to Monica, I began looking around the room. I could tell she was not happy as she began tapping her foot while smoking her cigarette. Searching through the shelves of books, I found an odd-looking case full of extravagant knives and or ornate short swords. So, one of these could have been used for the deed. Right, but do you know what else this reveals? What? That she was also a nutcase. See? Case closed. Miss Monica, please. Please. No, not yet. It just doesn't fit. Sayori, listen. If they had the time to clean the blade so thoroughly and put it back in place, why didn't they bother to take care of the other loose ends, like the crystals on the floor? I couldn't just stand there and ponder. I had to gather evidence. I had to look for more clues, so I rushed out of the room. Huh? Sayori, where are you going? I rushed past her, going straight to the dining hall. I needed to know. I started going through the colliery col cabinets, searching for what I was hoping to find. Have you lost your mind? Just let me do this. I'm not... He did not hire me to be your assistant just to stand around and type up stupid reports now, did you? Uh, she stood silent, in awe of my brazen and unactual act, uh, act of rebellion. Well, if someone's holding you down, you might as well act on your own wits and uh, do it yourself. I think that's the right way to do, Sayori. I returned to... I returned to searching the multitude of cabinets until my eyes found exactly what I was looking for. A wooden knife holder with a missing blade. Aha! Look, miss! There is a missing blade. I knew there was something to this whole case. We have to go interrogate the servants. I know maybe one of the ma handmaidens. Oh, perhaps the butler or... What if it was the policeman? Settle down for club's sake. That missing blade means nothing. I told you, she committed suicide because she was being cheated on. The fact she had knack for knives proves she was not a stable person. What? No, but she was a gold digger. Being cheated on would mean nothing to her. Now think, Sayori, since you seem you're, to think you're smart. Wouldn't she be kicked out of here if the man decided to change women? I mean, maybe, but... This discussion is over. We're heading back to the office. Wow. Wow, Miss Monica. I think you're definitely doing a terrible job. What the heck? This was out this is outrageous. How could you say with so much confidence that it was suicide? Enough. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to just believe that she committed suicide even though the It's not about what you believe. People kill themselves. It's a cruel world. Deal with it. I... Now shut your beak and follow me. You better write the report as I told you. Well, just like I said, some detective you are, Miss Monica. I would have done that job better myself considering the reason why I'm here. Or something. I don't know. I don't know. Dejectedly, I follow her as she headed out of the mansion. My frustration was unbearable.
but despite everything, I still felt like an idiot. I let my curiosity, my hunger for thrill, get in the way, and in the end, I impeded, in, I impeded the investigation. What first started off as anger and frustration at her begin being turned inwards? I can't believe your recklessness. Had I known just how delusional you are. She kept finding new and interesting ways to verbally berate me on our way back to the office. I kept silent. To think I, ha I had been shut down in such a way was tearing me apart. As we reached to the office, she had fallen silent as well. The tension in the air has could have been cut with a knife. We exchanged looks across the office space. Her eyebrows furrowed as her lips constantly parting and closing, seemingly mumbling to herself. Every time our eyes made contact, my head would fling away. As she took her hat and made her way to the office, she looked back and what I could only assume was my distressed expression. Before I go, Sayori, I want to be clear. I'm not mad at you. I just want you to see the world for what it is and not for what you hoped it was. Uh... My face was already buried in paperwork. I'll leave you be for the night. Okay, miss. And so, she turned around heading to her apartment. Hot-headed as I was, I tried my best to relax a bit and recall everything that happened. Monica might be right, though. I might be looking at reality with too much innocence. But how am I supposed to believe the two cases were suicide? Maybe the first girl, that case didn't have any strong leads to follow. I mean, like I said, why would they break their bones and commit suicide for? But tonight's case, on the other hand, doesn't make sense. We didn't even interrogate the servants or any other suspect. I muttered to myself as I got up and saw the turd table lying there, gathering dust. Maybe I could roll, roll some tunes to ease my mood. I, I, placed, I carefully placed a random record from the pile. I guess some good old tunes may definitely uh, calm you down. Now it was my time to write my letter to Mertens. Perhaps now, I could finally get my frustrations out of my mind. My dear, today's correspondence is dated Saturday, the 2nd of April. The last message received was dated Wednesday, the 27th of January. I'm deeply sorry, but I don't have enough spirit to write this letter like I usually do. Today was a mess of emotions and events, turning around from exciting to an intriguing to disheartening and disappointing. Today, Monica took me to my second case. That sounds like great news, right? It and and it really was a good for a while. it was for a good while. There's there was a high class lady who had been murdered inside her mansion. We had early leads. It was looking to be like one of the complicated murder mysteries in the books we used to read. Needless to say, I was ecstatic, and Miss Monica even let me do my own investigating. It had me hooked. The corpse had an enormous stab wound all the way to her heart, but there was no weapon in sight, so my mind was racing and I started looking around for more clues until I finally found a missing knife in the kitchen. We obviously had to start asking the servants around, but guess what? Monica called it a suicide. Barely any effort put into the investigation for looking for clues, just a declaration. I was about to lose my mind after that, just imagine. At times like this, where I wish I had you by my side, you always knew how to make me feel better. Honestly, I need a hug and tell someone to tell me that I wasn't completely wrong for thinking that way I do. Sometimes, I wish we were kids again. You know, when we were never too far apart for long? But now, I haven't heard from you in a while. I never got your letters back. It feels like you left me. I hope you haven't. Please respond soon. I need to hear from you. Always yours, Sayori. Writing the last lines, I couldn't hold my tears. Like a small drizzle, a couple droplets reached the paper. I wouldn't rewrite it once again, but I was just too tired. I laid on the couch, crying for a bit until I dozed off. I see. Monica was reading a paper while I wrote yesterday's case report. 
Without taking her eyes away from the paper, she puts a platter on the pla on the player. As for my typing, I was nearly done. Just a couple more lines. It's finished, miss. Marvelous. Leave it here on the desk and I'll send it by the mail. Ah, so... Hmm? Talking about mail, I was wondering. The answer is no, I didn't get any mail for you. She didn't even look at me to tell me that. Uh... What? You know what? This is bull****, Monica. Where are my letters? It's been too long. Oh, darling. Let me guess. Are you waiting for that guy to reply? Y yes It's not like him to take this long to send a letter back. You should forget about him. Who knows, maybe he's already found some other broad. Whoa now, Miss Monica, whoa now. Are you questioning my client's loyalty like that? Oh, please don't. You know that, well, according to him, he always has his loyalty for the, um, for little princess, so... Please, don't you dare question my client like that. Her comment struck me like a hammer. What if she was right? What if she had found someone else and had simply forgotten me? I refuse to believe it. Mertens would never... Look at you, all in shambles for some Joe. I'm not. Sure thing, dear. Monica, give me my... Another case, I reckon. Just a moment. She turned to answer to... She turned to answer the call. Even though I was being rude and screaming at her, she wouldn't even react. She kept her cool and now was now lighting a cigarette while speaking through the tube like nothing happened. Hmm. Alright, that was easy. Huh? Don't we have a new case? I understand if you don't want me to tag along. No, it's not that. Just that I don't even need to go to the scene. The police already went through it. What was it about? Ah, well, someone reported a foul stench coming from an, uh, an apartment in a residential building downtown. Police went through it and blah blah told me it's a suicide, so I'm not bothering with this one. And you're just gonna follow... And you're just going to follow the, what those lazy brutes tell you? Why would they call you if they already knew the answer? I'm not going to stand idle and file a case without even looking at the scene. Hey, relax, Sayori. Don't tell me to relax, Monica. Here, take a puff. It's gonna make you feel calmer. I... She held her cigarette up at to me, half smoked. Out of spite, I snatched it from her claws, placed it on my mouth, and took a long breath. My lungs filled with the burning smoke... Oh, sorry. My lungs filled with the burning smoke, making me cough violently as I choked. I threw the rest of the lit cigar cigarette on the floor. Oh, the heck was that supposed to calm me down? Hey, at least she uh, she doesn't tolerate smoking as well, so go on her. That's it, I'm going to the scene, just like an investigator should. I'm going to prove you all wrong. She didn't even try to stop me as I grabbed the notepad and left. Well, add a girl, Sayori. Go ahead. This is your chance to shine, my, uh, my sunshine. Cinnamon bun, whatever his uh, client is uh, calling her. This time I walked alone. Downtown was not too far away. The nerve of that woman to try and close the case without even asking. A look, uh, taking a look. Outrageous. But I had this fire burning inside me, determination to show myself and my worth. Despite everything, I was unstoppable. Well. If we're going to do this, might as well grab my uh, my trusty weapon right here and uh, see how this one goes. Right before I thought about asking the passers-by, I found an apartment building with two coppers guarding the door. Aces! If I had to bet, this might be the place. If not, I could always ask nicely. I approached the officers and they turned to face me. Evening, kitten. Need some help? Whoa, what's up with the name calling there, huh? Hello, officers. I'm, I hope I'm not interrupting, but I believe there's an investigation going on here, right? Perhaps. Who's asking? Oh, I'm Inspectress Sayori. I was called to survey the, pro the scene and write down a report. Ah, alright lady. But you see, 
I've been here for a couple of while, a couple of hours now, with all that putrid smell coming out. How about a reward? Um, sorry, but I stumbled on my words as I reconsidered how to properly handle the situation. Keep dreaming, officer. Yeah, that's right. In your dreams. I stepped inside. Passing between the policemen, I began smelling the suddenly a hand grabbing and groping my. Let go, officer. We don't tolerate that kind of harassment here. Eh. Whoa, don't get angry, dollface. It doesn't make you look pretty. Those filthy bastards. I boiled with rage. There we go now. Don't make me say it twice. Oh, she's mad now. Watch out. I really want to slap the man's soul out of his body. But clenching my fists and grinding my teeth, I turn around and head heading towards the scene. Good. I really didn't need that at the moment. Why couldn't I handle them like Monica does? Their laughter faded as I move inside the building. To keep the bitter thoughts away, I tried to focus on the case. The stench was really strong, so finding the door was not so hard at all. I took out my notepad and looked at the doorknob. Taking a quick breath, I prepared myself. I'm ready. Determined, I opened the door. What the? What? What the heck? Is that? No. This can't be possible. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be. What? I told you so. Was that some kind of time paradox? Sayori meets her. Okay. I suddenly wake up, soaked in sweat. That was... What was that? My hands are shaking. Monica. I'm supposed to do the thing for the festival with her. What was the thing again? The, the... Pamphlets. Maybe I can ask Mertens to come help. No, wait. He is busy. He's busy spending the day with... Her. He'll probably have fun, right? More fun than me. I guess it's better than wait that way then. Better enjoy himself than be saddled with me. Uh, this is awful. I cower under my sheets. After a while, I f hear a faint knock coming from my bedroom door. Is that? I don't want this. Not now. I just, I just want to be alone. Okay. Dreams of Lurcher Noir. Mod Director, Flasium. Flasium would fit. Crimson and Flasium. Art and Visual Design, fit. Well, um, I've heard, uh, I've heard fit from my client. He's, uh, he's actually a pretty cool guy, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, he really is. Well, that's, uh, quite the turn of events, huh? Would have never seen uh, herself like that in the, uh, in the investigation, but wow. And plus, some kind of investigator Miss Monica is, ain't she? But alas, at least it's over. This kind of uh, rummaging nightmare is finally over, but I don't know. I think this might be up more, uh, more up in my alley, I think, but I don't know how to say it, really. And... I think this might be the reason why my client invited me over, just to have a um, a good, relaxing time for me. And I think it's worth it, and I really do. And plus, I would have really taken down that cop myself if it weren't for that uh that harassment on my uh, on the uh, on the client's um princess or whatever. But uh, but I digress. So I uh, hope you all enjoy your time here with me. Private Investigator Mertens, and uh, if you want to, 
may as well might as well leave a like comment down below and uh subscribe i don't know how, to, how these things work really all i do is just sit around it with a newspaper i guess that's the only subscription i have but not something like this but i don't know maybe i'll grow into it so that said thank you all for your time and who knows if i might be back for another video like this or if there's a case or investigation going on maybe my client will let me know in that matter since i already gave him my card so until then private investigator mertens signing off Thank <laughs> you.